Hi, I'm Joss. Hi, I'm Claudia. And this is the Let's Get Down to Business podcast. We're two cousins on opposite ends of the globe with a lot of opinions about figure skating. And we're here to deliver the news, recaps, and let you know about my 5 a.m. night terror in which Evgenia Medvedeva left Brian Orser for a Terry. Oh, wait, it wasn't a night terror. And welcome back to part two of our Russian Test Skates episode where we talk about ladies and pairs. Yeah, this is going to be a really big episode. (laughs) But first, I'm just going to interject with something. Can we just talk about like how much I'm loving Johnny Weir on Dancing with the Stars. Like, he's just doing so good. (laughs) But you wouldn't expect him to do any less than amazing. Like, he's giving that extra serve. And I feel like the audience is equally like unprepared as they are prepared for it. (laughs) Yeah, like he's doing so well. Okay, he's already done a routine to the Lady Gaga song that he skated to and the one where he was actually contacted by Lady Gaga about his program. And also he's done a routine to Reflection from Mulan, my fave. And also... I know, me too. It's so good. And then he also did this routine... This past week, I believe it was like a quick step or a jive, and he and Britt were wearing the same green sequined two-piece suits. And like he just smashed all sorts of like gender conformity, gender norms in ballroom. Like, I love it. It's happening. He even made Australian like morning news TV, and it wasn't like him alone. It was actually Carol Baskin, but he was also included. <laughs> He was also included in kind of like the little um, the little fluff. And I don't think like the Australian news presenters knew what to say or do with Johnny. They were just like, oh, look at those moves. And then it just cut to Carol Baskin and they just went in on Carol Baskin. <laughs> but I was just like, Johnny Weir's on Australian TV. This is great. Um, but no. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Oh, 100%. Do you reckon like in his actual life goal wasn't to make the olympics in skating it was like the olympics in skating is a stepping stone so i can go on dancing with the stars <laughs> i mean it eventually happened he did eventually get on dancing with the stars and i'm just so happy that he's there he oh my gosh i was just gonna give a spoiler but he was on another reality tv show that i watched <laughs> uh not so long ago and i really enjoyed him on that too so yeah all in all, I just can't can't wait to see more from him. I think he's amazing in every way. Yeah. I mean, he'd, it'd also be amazing if he did pairs or like at least commentated <laughs> and used his Russian in... God, that segue was awful, but we're just going to keep going with it. I tried my best, okay? We're just going to keep going. <laughs> um, Russian test skate pairs. Now, this was a kind of like a week-ish field because um, we were missing um, Yevgenia Tarosova and Vladimir Morozov, um, as well as the kind of junior up-and-comers who it will be their first season senior, Apolinaria Panfilova and Dmitry Rilov. So they were missing from test skates. But we did get Alexandra Boykova and Dmitry Kozlovsky, and they looked so strong. I, like this was probably yeah no the this was my favorite pair of the test skates yeah what did you think of them Joss I think I mean first of all they're just so young right like Alexandra is like what like 18 Dimitri's like they're both 20 or under I think and they're just both so young but yeah but they skate so maturely also I do believe that he his costume came from the same role of velour from Joanne's fabrics as a lot of Shoma Uno's costumes <laughs> every time velour I didn't mind appears it. I, I I don't mind it either I think it's nice especially on him like I like I think that 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 he can definitely pull it off but but every time I see velour I, I do think of Shoma <laughs> I think he can pull it off absolutely yeah look they are she's 18 he's 20 but they have such a maturity about them that I completely forget that they're so young yeah and and I mean that's not to say that that young people can't do mature things right but mm-hmm. but I just yeah. think that they're skating and just the way that they come across on the ice is it's just very polished like it's just got a polish about it that I enjoy yeah like I I think they have exceptionally 
like quality skating and that might you know be due to their singles careers I mean that's that's why their side by side jumps are so strong is because they're such strong single skaters but I think what makes them so special is that they can actually skate together as a pair it doesn't look like two single skate skaters skating um so yeah I mean the only comment I'll make about their short program is that Dimitri needs to straighten his leg in his spread eagle um but other than that that lift though at the end was insane yeah that was such an amazing lift I was like I cannot oh if only there was an audience like when they competed in the Grand Prix that would get so many like oohs and ahs but 100% it'll be a plus five GOE all season I reckon plus five GOE yeah I mean we're already starting at like a plus five GOE I mean from 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 our humble opinions right like our sitting at home giving them a plus five GOE right but like if we're already starting off so strong like this is going to just be more amazing at the end of the season when they kind of add that refinement and they add that polish to it that that really kind of comes at the end of the season I'm I'm super stoked and 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 the free skate I mean I love the costumes and I think everything was just super on point I think they've really improved on their showmanship I think that their PCS will just kind of skyrocket over the course of the season so I'm excited. Yeah. I mean, they are keeping their free skate from free skate music from last season. So this program has had time to sit steep and mature. And yeah, I'm really starting to love them and love this program. Um, like you said, the costumes were great. Oh, the throw loop was excellent. And it was like really like bam in front of the judges and that kind of like old school Russian pair style that we haven't seen in a while. So that was great. And like I mentioned before, they're such strong single skaters and single jumpers that like I th- I thought when they were doing their side by side triple sows that Dimitri could have pulled off a quad sow. Like there was so much height in it. And uh yeah, no, I reckon that they're going to be hella strong. And be- and they've like started to um, inject more personality and performance into their programs now. So, yeah, I'm excited because Russian pair skating hasn't been really like great since like Tatiana Velocisha and Maxim Trankov. So maybe this is the team to finally break that kind of dead spell, like dead period. Um, not to say that, you know. The Russian pairs haven't been so great, but I mean, when you're talking about Tarasova and Morozov doing Candyman at the Olympics, Candyman, Candyman, okay, and they thought that would win them a medal. I just okay. Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's talk about Anastasia Mishina and Alexander Galiamov, who unfortunately has tested positive for COVID nineteen. Poor guy. Yeah, (laughs) poor guy. But like, mm, anyway. I love that they used Esmeralda in their short program. I've loved this music for so long. I don't think anyone's really skated to it. The choreography is just great because it hits all the accents in the music and it just works so well for pairs, even like single skating. But it's, you know, underrated and underused in my opinion. I reckon they have more personality this season. Their lift entrance was really great in their short program. Yeah, I mean, I mean, first of all, this is music that, number one, we don't see a lot. You know, it's not like one of these big war horse pieces. And number two, it's not, it, it is music that I really, really enjoy and I've been wanting to see for a long time, just like you. So, yeah, I mean, this isn't a pair that I've been following for a long time. I mean, I've seen them skate here and there, obviously. But I think that after seeing the short program, I, I look forward to seeing more. The free skate (laughs) is Bohemian Rhapsody. There's a lot going on in the free skate, starting with Bohemian Rhapsody. Including a gong in the middle of Bohemian Rhapsody. Like, why? Maybe it's to announce the arrival of We Are the Champions. (laughs) Oh, the choreography in We Are the Champions is just not good. Like, it's supposed to be like, yeah, we are the champions, and I don't feel anything. Yeah, I, I, I think it's a very stark contrast to their short program I think the short program is set up in a way that I I kind of figure that I would enjoy it but the free skate I I hope they they can rethink parts of the choreography during we are the champions but I mean just because that song is just so like you're supposed to be hyped for it you know and I wasn't personally very hype about this but fingers crossed that that it improves later on I think I wasn't mainly hyped because 
Bohemian Rhapsody does not deserve the costumes that they wore and I'm, I probably was still recovering <laughs> from the gong that I heard in the middle of it. Yeah, we'll see how it develops in um, during the season. How about we move on to Daria Pavlyuchenko and Denis Hordikin? I think that they looked really solid. I think that Daria's skating quality exceeded Dennis's. Oh, 100%. Here we kind of saw their personalities. We saw them mesh better than I have seen them in the past. Um, I think the skating elements looked pretty good. I Again, this is one that kind of just needs to mature a little bit over the season. Um, I mean, the programs, not them. <laughs> um, but, but I think that with time... Yeah, I, with with time, I, I believe that the, that this program will just get so much better because it's already looking pretty great. Yeah, and so their short program is to sing, 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 which is overused, but I just love it so much. It's always so catchy. So their short program this season is a lovely, refreshing improvement from kind of the less performative programs that they've had in the past. But their free skate, though, it just went back to the snoozeville almost like solid elements but i'm not really a big fan of the music and i just didn't really feel much yeah it was kind of more of a flat free skate again you know as as with all of these people i'm i'm hoping that with time it will kind of improve. That seems to be the trend here, but I think that's all I'm going to say about their free skate. It, yeah, it's the most diplomatic thing to say with time. <laughs> with time, with time. And I, I mean, I genuinely mean that. I, I think that with time, I think they're both talented. I, I think that they are showing that they're improving in both their elements and mm -hmm, definitely. in their showmanship, their skating quality, their connection in general. So I do genuinely think that, I think that they are heading towards an upward trajectory. Awesome. Let's move on to ladies and let's start with coaching changes. Drama time. Do we have to? <laughs> Do we have to? Okay. Well, let's start off easy. Let's start off with Aliona Kostonaya and Sasha Trusova leaving a Terry and going to Plushenko. Ah, yes. They are Plushenko's angels now, I hear. <laughs> but yes, they have both left Sambo and they are both now training with Evgeny Plushenko. How do we feel about this? Obviously, there's been so much talk surrounding it. Sasha wanted Sasha and her parents wanted her to be the absolute star, the only angel with Plushenko. And then Aliona was just like, yeah, fuck that. I'm coming as well. <laughs> it's really interesting because obviously Aliona's favorite coach has, has been well documented is hot Sergei, Sergei um, Rosanov. And Sasha no longer works with Sergei Rosanov. She works with another coach. And there's, so there's kind of like a split in the middle. They don't share the same ice time. Elena Ilinik chose to work with Sasha instead of Aliona. So I, I would love to be a fly on that wall. There's a lot of big personalities there for sure. Yeah, and, and kind of like we know the Russian Skating Federation, Russian skating in general, there is a lot of like politicking going on, you know, so so obviously there is probably more that more to this than meets the eye, but but I think it is very interesting that they are essentially working with pretty different coaches. They are not sharing skating time. But I think that obviously we'll talk about this a little bit more later, but I can really kind of like see the differences that that each of them are making this season and I'm looking forward to seeing what may come it's especially alexandra trusova's new costume the the teal and purple one that's a very good change if i do say so myself <laughs> oh absolutely i agree i think with sasha to have plushenko at her side to really like have her focus and really push her jumps is something that she needs mentally because you know she probably wasn't too happy with not getting as much attention over at sambo and um reportedly a terry and everyone trying to you know, kind of quell the amount of quads she was doing. So I think that Sasha and Plushenko would be a great match. You know, there's different choreography. So maybe there'll be more focus on her skating skills. Not that Plushenko has, ha, didn't have amazing skating skills himself, but he certainly had better skating skills than Sasha currently has. And with Aliona, we know that she's been injured recently. And so her outing at Russian Test Skates wasn't the best. It was a really recent move. There was so much drama around her switching coaches and skating schools after the transfer deadline. It just sounds like, like soccer slash football. Like there's a transfer deadline. 
Since when? The poor girl has had so much vitriol and hate just spewed at her for switching coaches. And it's just been awful. Like she had to switch off um, comments on Instagram. Like just, it's too much. Like why, why hate on a 17 year old girl for switching coaches? I, I just. Yeah. I, I mean, we, we really have to remember, you know, even though like we are talking about like Russian figure skating politics, like at the core of this, these are really young teenage girls, right? And and kind of when we see these comments on social media, sure, like we're commenting like on their coaching change, but these people are commenting like on them, like personally, they're commenting like on their families, they're commenting on their bodies, they're just saying such nasty stuff, right? And, and at the end of the day, like I was saying, like these are teenage girls and, and I think that they need respect and they need the environment to kind of grow up how they want to and and with agency and and so I'm I'm hoping that with this coaching change and after this all settles down that they are just able to train and and do their thing it looks like they are heading in a good direction now but but truly I hope that this kind of vitriol directed at them through social media settles down and just kind of quells over time yeah and speaking about agency we know Aliona's Out of the three A's, she's the most outspoken one. When she did leave, um, Eteri posted on Instagram this long message just full with dramatics about how Aliona had a non grata list and yada, yada, yada. And Aliona came straight back and was just like, dude, if you want to say shit about me, say it to my face, not over Instagram. That's inappropriate. And I was just like, whoa, girl, get it. Like she had absolutely no holds barred into like, putting Terry in her place really and good on her for doing that because you know she is somebody who is more outspoken and not in like a really immature way like she has she has her opinion she is educated about her opinion in her opinion at least and she she goes out and says it um which is very reminiscent of Yevgenia and how she um approaches a lot of her media um media talks and interviews so yeah I was really I was really impressed with Aliona and how maturely she handled it, given the amount of, I guess, barraging that was directed at her for this move. Right. And, and you know, like we were saying, she is only 17, right? So, so had she chosen or I guess had she received this information in like a more emotional way she's 100% like not to blame for that whereas Terry is a full-grown adult, right? Like, and I remember with the last <laughs> kind of era of dramatics I don't even remember what it was but she posted this like renaissance era poem on her Instagram and I was like <laughs> why do we need to be doing this like adults need to be reacting like adults right and 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 teenage girls can react like teenage girls right and and so just kind of throughout this whole thing what what I'm really trying to say is that I hope that this is a new positive direction for them I I hope that they have agency in their training how they set up their programs their music how they want to be as athletes because ultimately like that's kind of what matters right it's just kind of their trajectory individually as athletes and not part of like this Russian figure skating politicking thing that's happening yeah and you know a lot of people are like oh you know Aliona and Sasha, they're gonna, their skating quality is gonna suffer because Ateri's regime, you know, is strict, but, you know, they work hard enough that they do get those amazing performances out. But I think what a lot of people forget, like, put aside all the drama um, about Ateri's methods, but I think a lot of people forget that those skaters want to win as well. They're not just sitting there just going, oh, I'll take a day off if I want to because yada, yada, yada. They've been trained and they're in a such a deep field and environment that they want to win. Like they, they do want to be on that Olympic team and want to be on the podium. So they will push themselves as hard as they want to. And if they don't push themselves as hard as um, people think they need to, they've got their parents to tell them off. They can watch other girls. You know, they're pretty capable of pushing themselves enough at this level. Right. Yeah, definitely. Like while these are teenage girls, they are also high level athletes. So I think that they should be respected as such. And I think that, yeah, just kind of like this whole drama surrounding Terry Plushenko, you know, like removing the adults from the situation kind of and, and just kind of remembering that these are athletes, young athletes with a solid trajectory. And hopefully, you know, I know that there's kind of like this whole media sensation around 3A, right? And and maybe kind of with this move, there will be more 
vision around each of them as as individuals. You know, that's that's great because as much as 3A is just like really cute and stuff, I'm pretty sure that they got sick of it. They're just like, dude, focus on me. Like, hello, I'm not just one of 3A. I am I am me. I'm Anna. I'm Aliona. I'm Alexandra. Let's move on to your favorite topic, everyone's favorite topic. For some for some reason, like two days after Genia was seen FaceTiming Brian at Russian test skates, we get the news that Yevgenia Medvedeva has moved back to a Terry Toot Baritza. Joss. Thoughts? <laughs> uh well, I uh, received this information much like a night terror at five in the morning <laughs> when I usually wake up to either use the bathroom or because I've had some sort of nightmare. Same here. In this case, it was not to use the bathroom but because I had had some sort of nightmare that <laughs> Genya had moved back to a Terry. And I truly, for minutes and minutes, thought that this was just some kind of like dream. Like I was not in my own body when I received this news. And that is... Now that I'm saying that out loud is mildly concerning for me. But but, but apart from that, apart from that, yeah, I, I, I just this whole situation, while it sounds like it was in most ways amicable, you know, Brian posted a positive message on his Instagram about Genia. Genia posted a positive message on her Instagram about Brian. I just can't help but be a little bit concerned about this. And also kind of now receiving the news on the other end of the second stage of the Russian Cup that Evgenia is now seeking medical treatment for what I presume is an exacerbated, exacerbated back injury. I fear that returning to Terry, her old ways, uh, her old technique that she had worked very hard on changing and modifying could become kind of like an Elizabeth Tersenbaeva type of situation where, you know, this injury just keeps getting irked and irked and irked and, and suddenly she's kind of off the scene for an extended, extended period of time. And that's my fear that I am definitely projecting onto her and I own that, but I am also really scared for her <laughs> and her body. Oh, yeah. No, I think, I don't think anybody, and I mean, nobody predicted this. And everyone was shocked. It is probably one of the most 2020 things to happen to skating. Like you said, it, it seemed very amicable. And I understand the split. Like, I, I understand the split from Brian and Tracy. Because obviously with COVID, you know, you can't have a really effective coaching relationship and effect through FaceTime. Like, that's just hard. You don't even get to see them, you know, properly on the rink. You know, it... it I understand that it's hard, but going back to a Terry, okay, um, I have too many thoughts that my brain cannot pass through. I only hope that she she's going back to a Terry because that's what she's used to. Um, it's a familiar environment. I mean, she pretty much grew up as a Terry's second daughter and a Terry was her second mom, really. There's always that level of comfort there. But my only hope is that, you know, through her move to Canada and her work with Brian and Tracy, she's gained so much more agency. She understands her body better. She understands the way she works. You like, are there really any other coaches out there that she could have gone to? Like Elena Bujanova isn't really known for delivering great, like or coaching great people. Tatiana Tarasova is not really, she's there as like a, as a figure, less than like a coach. She's not really a coach coach. Like, was a Terry really her only option? Uh, well, I mean, <laughs> as we were talking about not five minutes ago, there have been people who have recently departed from Sambo. So, I mean, it's not like there wasn't any room there. So, yeah. So there's like this space at Sambo because Sasha and Aliona have left. So there's a void and Evgenia's like, maybe I'll just slide right in. Yeah. And like you were saying, like there is kind of the sense of comfort there, right? This is where she grew up. Also, like you were saying, I hope that kind of by working with people like Shaylin, Brian, Tracy, uh, even like Jason Brown, all of her buddies, right? Like at Cricket Club. Aww. I know it, it breaks my heart, <laughs> but just kind of hoping that after working with all of these people 
that she has changed her outlook on the way that she approaches certain things, especially physically, things that could potentially exacerbate injuries, even things to do with things like eating, um, her general like upkeep and conditioning of her body. You know, I, I'm hoping that there was some insight gained when she was in Canada that she can continue to uphold while she returns to a Terry. But I seriously have doubts about Daniil's mental stability after he gave like a really, really interesting interview after the move was announced and somebody asked him like, oh, are you going to like do any, like have any changes to Evgenia's programs? Like, are you going to do any touch-ups or adjustments? Um, are you Or like, are you going to contact and work with Shaylin and Jeff Buttle? And he was just like, no, you know, I don't need, like, we don't need to like, consult them we can do things fine on our own and i was like okay there that was so cocky oh my gosh yeah i was very nonplussed it was i was extremely nonplussed by that interview like first of all like shaylin Bourne is like one of the best known and most talented and hard-working choreographers in the the competitive industry right now so to speak about like her work and the program that she had started to put together kind of like in that way was I was very kind of nonplussed about it that it was so disrespectful and you're like you really think that are you so up yourself that you're just like I don't need to like you know consult with them at all you know we can do our own touch-ups and like do do not touch the programs at all like do not do not lay a finger on those programs don't you dare <laughs> Yeah, that interview was really not cute. And, you know, like I was just picturing, you know, I, I was thinking about who these kind of archetypes might be, right? Stepping back into Evgenia's life. And Terry in the kiss and cry in her fur coat, I just get Cruella vibes from her. Oh, my and God. Then, and then and then they posted this photo. I think all of them posted this photo on Instagram where it was Terry, Danny G., and Sergei Dudikov and Zhenya. And they're all just kind of like standing awkwardly on the ice. Kind of like, it was kind of like hover hand, but not really. Oh my God, yes. You know, like just that that vibe. Hover hand energy, right? It had big hover hand energy. Mm -hmm. And so basically what I was thinking was like, Terry is Cruella. D Danny G is like Jasper. And Sergei Dudikov is like Horus. They fit these archetypes exactly. Yes, they do. And, and like just even her with like her fur, fur coats. Okay. Like, okay, 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 okay. Just, just vibe with me here. Okay. So mm -hmm. not to, let's not touch animal cruelty. Okay. So she's not stealing dogs. She's stealing like what's something else that's fuzzy. Pom poms or loofahs like from the target aisle. Yeah, okay? okay. Let's just say she's like sure. in target. <laughs> Oh my stealing God. loofahs from the target aisle to to construct her code a terry would never go to tajay she wouldn't even step foot a inside of tajay would never go to target <laughs> <laughs> but okay like literally like this is the archetype okay like it's like a terry is cruella and danny g and sergey are like her henchmen okay and and because sergey is the horus he holds the, the plush tissue boxes, because this is totally something that Horace would do and yeah. not Jasper. <laughs> okay. But also, I have to mention the archetypes. Definitely, I'm 100% with you. But Danny G is the only person wearing skates in that photo. And I have a feeling he's he has such a complex that he's just like, whoa, 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 wait, before we take the photo, let me put on my skates because I cannot have a Terry be taller than me. Oh, my gosh. This is like the same energy that he had when he was talking about Shaylin in that interview, like... Oh my god, same energy. He's getting worse, though. Like, he's getting insufferable. At this point, he's insufferable. Okay, this is not, like, the Dr. House version of Jasper in the live-action version of 101 <laughs> Dalmatians with Glenn Close, but this is, like, the animated version of 101 Dalmatians back in, like, the 60s <laughs> or the 70s, like, and where Jasper just has, like, no neck, you know, and he's wearing this, like... <laughs> page boy hat like the checkered page boy hat this is that jasper not the dr house version of jasper in the glenn close version of 101 dalmatians oh <laughs> uh, okay if we talk about this any longer we're gonna run so over time so let's get into the ladies let's start with anna shobakova jocelyn what do you think of her showing this season i think that 
Danny G <laughs> no. <laughs> has uh, choreographed programs for her to music that is very, very on brand for her. I think that she is very much kind of like a delicate, lithe, lyrical type of skater. And in both of her programs, I think that they are very much suited to her style of skating and her style of skating skills. Um, the Both the costumes are very much on brand and similar to each other in the short program and the free skate. They are very similar across the board between the programs and also within the programs. So the short was, it really worked for me. I think that number one, no more over the boot tights makes such a difference. It, oh God, so much better, so much better. Um, so yeah, like, like I was saying, I really, I think the short program is amazing. I think it's very strong. It's well suited to a musicality, the choreography, how it's not great, but Anna skates the shit out of it. I still really dislike her jump takeoffs. I, I can't stand them. The pre-rotation, the kind of like hammer toe into it. It's just not for me. I'm real. I, do, I don't, I'm not a fan of her jump technique at all. Thank God her spins are lovely, her you know, demeanor and everything else is lovely. Um, she needs to work on that goddamn foot turnout though. She's getting better. She's getting better, but oh, that goddamn foot. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I guess moving into the free skate, um, this is definitely more instrumental music along the same lines of her short program. We start off with Philip Glass, very different from Nathan Chen's Philip Glass, but but I do enjoy the music selection. I think that the jumps look fine. I think that the program, again, plays to her strength. I, I do just kind of overall, I think these programs need more range. I think they need more. A hundred percent. Yeah, I think they need more range and dynamic in the music. I think they need more range and dynamic in the choreography. I just think they need a little more oomph because while they are both nice and they're lovely and she skates them very nicely, they just need a little bit more something, something. Look, I think her sh- short program is really strong. I think her free skate is an absolute snooze fest. I was so excited because I love the Hours soundtrack. The score by Philip Glass for the Hours is amazing. And when it first came on as like the first piece of her short of her free skate, I was like, I was like, oh my god, this is gonna be amazing. This is gonna be great. And then it just cuts into other random music, and I'm like, ugh. And then the second half of her free skate at Test Skates was recycled music. It w- That was going to be Aliona's um, free skate from last season before she switched to Twilight. And they just like, oh, okay, let's just recycle it and put it into Anna's program. And, oh, the choreography was really mediocre. It's just typical Danny G choreography at this stage. And it was just dead. Nothing really happened in the music. I was like... Her ending position is the same as Camila's like ending position in her short. I was like, this is just a big snooze fest. I just, I, ugh, not a fan of the free skate. It's just the same, same old, same old, but not even as good as the same old. Do you get what I mean? Yes, I do definitely get what you mean. I, I Again, I think these programs just need more range. I did. However, last year I saw her at Skate America. I went to Skate America live with my friend in Vegas. It was amazing. I saw her skate live and she just kind of like came to life, right? Like when I was watching mm-hmm. her. And that was a very different Anna Sherbakova than I saw in these test skates. Yeah, no, we all know that she's an amazing performer. Like out of the three A's, she's the one with the most innate musicality and performance. And that's why she's been so popular, you know, with with all the fans over, across the globe for so long. Even as a little, little itty bean before she even got on the Junior Grand Prix, there was so much talk about her because she is an amazing performer. But there is nothing to perform in that in that free skate like the firebird worked so well for her last season i can't imagine how like almost electrifying her performance would have been live in person because she would have given it and you know maybe she just needs another dress change this season put another camp dress change in there and we'll finally you know spark some attention to that boring free skate yeah it was i really really enjoyed the firebird i loved the costume change in real life i'm a sucker for costume change okay like it's so i camp. love i love a costume change in the middle of a program but i mean that is my energy i'm a campy i'm, I'm a very <laughs> campy human being but like i like that shit you know and and that's just a very different energy than than she was serving here that that i know that that she can serve because i saw it like live like with with my own two eyes yeah and look 
I feel like they just need to give him more, like you said, more range. Like Aliona obviously has Twilight Camp and that's, everyone loves the camp of it. You know, Sasha gets the hard hitting music and fight. We'll talk about her later, but like she finally gets some slow music this season. And, you know, Anna's just had slow classical instrumental music the entire time. And I'm like, can we get something different? Like at least one classical for her short or her long and then just something else completely different. Like, please. Yeah, give her like a Benny and the Jets, you know? Oh, like, they, they would <laughs> never know, allow a some... Benny and the Jets. They would never allow They it. would never. Oh, but we, never, could, we can still no. dream. All right, so how about we start talking about Camila Valieva, who is still a junior and will remain a junior for still a few more seasons. She will turn senior um, the year of the Olympics. But the Russian Fed was just like, ah, oh, whatever. She can come up into the senior Russian test skates. What do you think of her programs? Uh, well, first of all, I love Eric Radford. <laughs> and uh, Eric Radford did the music for her short program. And I really enjoyed that. So props to him. And I mean, I, I did really enjoy this. I think that it suits her. She has a similar sort of energy to Anna Sherbakova. She has sort of this like live, yeah. lyrical musicality about her. Um, I I think that uh, speaking of over the boot tights, I think that Camila also needs to follow in Anna's footsteps with uh, oh, yeah. removing herself from mm-hmm. over the boot tights. Um, but she is kind of again kind of like a delicate skater with very very nice spins we saw all of that in her short program to this music that I did really enjoy so I all in all I kind of I like the short program yeah we love the pandering of team to 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 ISU committee member Eric Radford (laughs) um so Camila's body also matured over over the break um and I think I think like everyone I still worry for her body because she doesn't have the best jump technique um we don't know how it's going to impact like her hips and all of that but you know but yeah no her spins are stunning she's such a porcelain doll yeah I think she she does need to work on emoting a bit more just like with a lot of um that generation of skaters like Darius was a Shova. Um, she needs like it's all very blank in the face. Like there's there's lovely movement and lyric lovely lyrical movement and stuff stuff, but it doesn't look like she's enjoying anything. And I think especially in her free skate, like for Bolero, there's just nothing in the face. Yeah, and and I think that you know the quintessential Bolero program, right? Is is Carolina Costner's program, right? So absolute legend. Woohoo! <laughs> to kind of like have that in our minds, right? Kind of, kind of like Tessa and Scott's Moulin Rouge, right? Like it's it's kind of the quintessential program that that we think of when we hear this music, and and so when Camila does Bolero, right? There's definitely a way to go about it so that it's you know kind of not that, but but it also just didn't really seem like the choreography was do that she was doing was very kind of suited to the music kind of whatsoever and I think I think that part of it needs to be rethought a little bit it's just so not tailored to bolero like the first 10 seconds is yeah because like it's the start of the program and you know Danny G needs to do his like his best work at the start before it just all falls to shit at the late like later parts of the program but still like after the beginning like 10 seconds you could switch out bolero for any other piece of music and the choreography would still like work, like swap it for "Hoe Down Throw Down" by Miley Cyrus, or like whatever other Billie Eilish song there is. It would all work. It would definitely all work. It, it it's it feels like we've seen this choreography before. It seems it feels like we've oh seen, yeah, because we have because we have. <laughs> that is the truth. Uh, it feels like we've seen the sequence before. It, it just needs to be rethought a little bit. I think. Yeah, there's just too many leg kicks, and it just not. Nah. But okay. That scary quad toe fall at the beginning had everyone gasping, but then she just gets up, flies to the other end of the rink and just lands a beautiful quad toe. Like props to her. Yeah, that, that, that fall was very much a Boyang Jin, please don't crash into the boards kind of fall. It was, it was oh a very Boyang Jin <laughs> kind of fall. It was that, that, that similar energy, but I hope the, the, the free skate looks a little bit different the next time we see it. It won't, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay do we want to move on 
Who's next? Uh, next up we have Aliona Kosternaya. This is very interesting. This is her first outing being an angel of Plushenko. I love her so much. She's my baby. She's my daughter. She's an, she's absolutely my daughter. Um, we only saw her short program because her, her free skate isn't ready yet. And we did get exciting news, though, that Shailene Bourne is choreographing her free skate. I'm so excited. It's choreography she finally deserves. Yes. I'm I'm so stoked about this. And, you know, this time it'll actually be Shailene Bourne and not Danny. <laughs> like we talked about previously with him, Kenya. But, um, okay, mm-hmm. so so why don't we talk about her short program, which we actually saw. Uh, we didn't get to see any of her free skate. It sounds like she's still working on it. But with the short program, it's Billie Eilish. There, there is uh, just no time to die, and then it moves into the kind of whispery vocal part of You Should See Me in a Crown by Billie Eilish. Um. I don't love the music cut. I was Ugh. praying and hoping that after she had left Sambo that she would receive some better transitions in her music. Unfortunately, that did not happen here. It's just very Russian music cut, to be honest. Like, Russians in general don't have the greatest music cuts. Okay, so I don't mind that she's skating to Billie Eilish at all. You should see me a crown. When when it came out that she was skating to that, I was just like, yes, okay. Let's do it. Let's move from one Billie Eilish program from Daniil Gleikengaus to another one. And then she came out in Russian test skates and it started off with just no time to, to die. And like this weird heartbeat, like medical, like doo 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 I'm like, oh, this is so Russian. I, I wouldn't have minded it if it was just you should see me in a crown. But together, it's just off. It's not great. It really isn't. And I can, I feel like you can almost sense that this program was put together in a rush yeah and and I I I think that kind of just like her face during the skate and even after the skate was kind of just like oh you know like I kind of did it um and and also you know it, it kind of looks like it's not done which it isn't right so yeah I'm trying to be optimistic I I think that they might change a whole lot of it yeah, you, you could kind of just tell that she wasn't satisfied with the way yeah. that it was performed at, at Test Gates. Yeah, and I think Jackie Wong, he tweeted that, you know, there was no quote-unquote Aliona special until kind of the step sequence, which I love the step sequence. It is fire. I love it. Um, but even still, it doesn't, well, at this point in the program's development, it still doesn't have that, like, oomph yet. Like, But compared to the rest of the program, it does. But... Yeah, no, at the end, her expression was just like, okay, can I, like, I'm done. Can I get, can I get off the ice now? Like, I hate this. And, you know, afterwards, Plushenko did come out and say that, you know, she was injured and she was skating on injections. And like, you know, it's so sad because she, I feel like she knew she had to put something out there. Otherwise, the media would absolutely go ham on her. Yeah, it, it, it's just kind of like a real sad situation, but like. I'm glad that we got to see her skate um, and I hope that she recovers from my injury as soon as possible because I have missed that inner bow to double axle. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I think just as like a viewer and audience member, it was very nice to see her again, just in general. Uh, I do kind of have mm-hmm. a soft spot for Aliona, so I I just I enjoyed too. yeah like I just I just liked seeing her again. It, I know that she didn't look very confident. I I know that her free skate is not put together enough to do the test skate, but I I do look forward to seeing her more. I just love her. I do, and and I hope the best for her this season. Yeah. Oh, I do have to mention though the ending position of her short program is prime. I love it. Oh, it has so much sass. Yes. It's so great. Oh, love it, love it, love it. And also, we got to see her, you know, work with Hot Sergey, and he was at the boards. And I love this partnership. You know, they've worked together for so long, and you know, I feel like she moved to Plushenko a lot because you know Sergey Rosanov was there. And it's great because, you know, he was the one who helped get her triple axel last season. Um, Oh, another point that I have to mention is that it is pretty odd that Aliona got so much hate for, you know, switching coaches after the transfer window closed. But when Yevgenia switched back to Eteri, there was nothing. 
well, there was kind of like, yay, you know, Yevgenia's back to a Terry. She's, you know, back in Russia. But there was no hate. But it was still outside the transfer window. Like, come on, double standards much? Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, let's, yeah, let's, let's talk about a non Terry girl. Our lovely Empress. Our lovely Empress, Lisa Tuktamisheva. What do you think of her short program, Joss? Oh, I feel like I just like exhaled like that. That was yeah. just so much. It was just so much dramatics. It was so much Renaissance era poetry that 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 we need something refreshing now. We need we need some. Oh, so much tension, so much. But I I, I really enjoy the short program. I I think that it's choreographed by Capolini and Lenate. Okay, and and these two are two of like probably my favorite kind of like quote unquote like classic skaters. Like they were really big around the 2014 Olympics, kind of the same time that Carolina Costner was really big. This is kind of like peak prime era for Italian figure skating. Mm -hmm. And I read that it was her idea to work with them after the 2014 Worlds. Um, She had performed with them in a show in Japan and in Italy after Russian Nationals. It was just kind of like meant to be like, these are a lot of my favorite people in one area. And I dig it. I, I dig all my favorite people in one area. Love to see it. Yeah, and who and who knew that, you know, they they would choreograph such a great Spartacus piece. You know, Spartacus is definitely well suited to Lisa. She came out like when everyone else was skating in their crop tops and, you know, training gear, she came out in full costume. I say yes to the dress. It is a great Spartacus costume with a crown. And you know what? She's got her She's worked so much on her artistry over the off season. Her billman is back. You know, the Lutz, what was it? The Lutz, she didn't really do combinations here, but, you know, a lot of the stuff that she hasn't, you know, she's left out of her programs these past seasons are back. You know, it looks like her artistry has improved. Maybe that's due more to the choreography. But yeah, I, I really, I thought this was great. Yeah, and, and I mean, it's probably a combination of the choreography by people that I love. <laughs> All my favorite people in the same space. We love to see it. But also, it's it's probably her working a lot on her artistry. You know, I, I was kind of just thinking, you know, what do you think we can attribute to this? And when we when people were not on the ice, right, during, during COVID times, the peak of COVID, quote unquote peak, I really mean when people actually cared about COVID. Um, but when people were <laughs> not on the ice, what did they have to work on, right, is like they could do ballet at home, they can work on their flexibility, right, all things that things like turnout, you know, everything that they can do to condition themselves off the ice, right. And I think that Lisa has always kind of known that that her jumps have been great, her technique has been great, and her artistry has needed to kind of play catch up and 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 I definitely see the improvement and I think a combination of the choreography and her hard work has has brought her here so yeah definitely love it yeah and you can also see the improvement in her artistry in her free skate which she definitely went to Alexander Samarin in the off season and was just like give me costume pointers because there is <laughs> one huge bloody character Chinese character for love which is I on the back of her costume and it looks shit oh my gosh I I feel like this is reminiscent of two things number one it's kind of like those tattoos that you see on tumblr that are like oh God. I told my friend no. who knows not a lick of Chinese but somehow wanted a Chinese character on their body that the word for elephant was really the word for perseverance <laughs> and now here they are with the Chinese character for elephant on their forearm large and in charge <laughs> It also kind of just reminds me slightly of, you know, we know that Halloween is coming up and we just have to kind of be mindful of not culturally appropriating our costumes from other people's cultures that we do not identify with. Uh, People's cultures are not Oh, this was just one huge cultural appropriation mess. Yeah, I I just, I'm really not a fan of this character for love on the back of her costume it reminds me of both of those things I hope she rethinks that um maybe she could go back to an old costume for a little while while she retools this one but yeah not really a fan of that part of it however I don't mind the actual skating I I don't think it's my favorite program of hers but I don't mind it yeah no I agree with you on that look there's there's plenty of ways to do a tasteful um program that you know, represents a culture that's not your own. Like we saw that with Jenya doing Memoirs of a Geisha last season. But this just 
got yeah I think the costume really ruins it for me you know we've seen Lisa do a bunch of you know skates to like tangos and to other um musics like music from other cultures and they were all fine the the costume just just ruins it all for me um there's a lot of the music itself isn't the most it doesn't lend itself to you know your typical you know peaks and troughs um back up to peak for the ending of the program and it was just a bit flat um but like you said, her skating overall is fine. It's a good start to the season. Her spins look improved. And I think that once she's in competition, the program might work better because, you know, there's, you know, she can actually fully perform. Um, it, it might be a grower. Yeah, it is okay. I, I think that a part of it, the part of it that doesn't really seem okay, apart from the costume, is that it really, it doesn't really seem like her energy to me, maybe. I think mm. that could be it. I think she... Her energy to me, like like quintessential Lisa Tuktumeshiva, is like a you don't love me, jazz hands, side eyeing the whole Russian skating federation. Yeah, like that is, yes, that is her brand, right? And and this didn't really seem like her brand. Obviously, skaters can skate off brand, right? Otherwise, you get kind of like an Anna Sherbakova, yeah. on the total flip side, right, where everything just kind of looks same same between and within programs, right? But. But I think that this didn't really seem like her and perhaps that when it marinates a little bit more, it might. I have hope for it. It's not my least favorite thing in the world. But yeah, yeah I, th- I just think there can be some improvements made, especially with the costume. Yeah, she definitely needs to skate to You Don't Own Me, though, or at least, like at least for an exhibition because she would put the sultry and sass straight into it. OK, let's let's move on to another mission student. Let's go to Sofia Samodurova. Who only skated the short program because she because she had a flu and so she was too sk- sick to skate the free skate. Like, hello, yes. does COVID does COVID exist in Russia? <laughs> Do they care? <laughs> I, I I mean I I it definitely exists since two of their athletes have tested positive, <laughs> so it definitely exists. It definitely exists, but do they um, care? Yeah. No, and I mean, I am glad that she stayed home and, and did not participate in the free skates. Otherwise, it might have been many more uh, than two people testing positive. But I, I do enjoy the music of her short program. There's so many man with the harmonicas this season, though. Like, it's great, but there's just like so many. Yes, there there are a lot. And, and I think that with a lot of the other athletes... I do see them kind of coming back to form. I see some areas of improvement. I guess with Sophia, I, I, I feel this kind of like sense of frustration with her, just kind of like in general, because, you know, that year that she had where she won Euros, you know, she seemed like she was just like having a moment, you know, like that was her moment. And she was just kind of going to like blast off from mm-hmm. there, right? She had burlesque. She had this like faux voguing tutting kind of like hand motions in the middle right where oh, they're kind of yes. like snapping pictures I was so into it right and I was like oh my gosh this is it the, the, the royal purple dress like this is her moment and uh, I just don't think that you know there has been much movement past that moment and I I wonder if you know it, it just seems to kind of hit hit a plateau and I hope that she can move past this plateau um, I think that she was, she just got very lucky that the season she peaked or came up was the season the three A's were still in junior and she really capitalized on the moment, but I don't think like, look, her jumps aren't great. It, it still bamboozles me that her jumps are still like so small, but she's a mission skater. Like th- that will forever boggle my mind, but I based on, you know, last season and her outing this season even though it is early in the season you know I I think her artistry like coming with her age will improve and she'll be one of those skaters that really can um sell a program and she really does sell this program even though she looked like Cruella de Vil and her hair dye was just like she should be skating to 101 Dalmatians this episode by the way is not being sponsored by Glenn Close (laughs) or Dr. House (laughs) <laughs> There's a lot of 101 Dalmatians going on here. <laughs> we are not sponsored by any dog shelters, but if you'd like, you know, to send dog profiles our way, we'd happily accept them. If you would like to, just holler at me. We are in the market for a dog. Maybe not 101 of them <laughs> or loofahs, but... <laughs> I'll, I'll take 100. You can keep one. I'll, I'll keep one. That's fine. <laughs> I'll take the hundred. Um, but 
Yeah, so I think when she competes in Russian Cup, I'd love to see her free skate. Yeah, same here. I guess we should then move on to uh, Evgenia Medvedeva, <laughs> sponsored by Nike. The moment, Yevgen- <laughs> Sp- sports really? gear, yeah, black top and black bottom, sponsored by Nike. Um, I-, I-, I would never have known. <laughs> <laughs> I oh man, this short program, I. I don't know. I, I, I don't have words. Claudia, why don't, why don't you start us off? Masquerade Waltz. I love the music. I don't feel like it fits her well, which is really surprising because when she came out with her music selections, I was just like, I back this. I back this. And it might be, you know, I trust Jeff Buttle's choreography. It just might be that, you know, she wasn't really feeling that great on the day. I mean, her, her spins looked really really slow they didn't look great at all um it just it felt kind of dead behind the eyes almost and I feel like that maybe later on in the season when she's healthier and you know she's had time to really work on this program it might be a real winner but for now not my favorite and also the triple loop triple toe like the combination it it will never cease to be the weirdest most wrong feeling combination in skating history like triple like loop toe just uh, sends me like uh, doesn't (laughs) gives me give me yeah it's it's a lot I I think that we definitely do see the downfall of training over FaceTime I think that her facial expression coming off the ice and talking to Brian over FaceTime kind of behind the boards kind of said it all it it definitely, I think the situation was very frustrating for her. And obviously, like, we don't know whether she was kind of in the process of moving back to a Terry kind of when this took place. So we don't know if, like, that was affecting her in any way, right? Just, this just kind of, like, wrestling with it either mentally or physically, you know, in the process of transition both ways. Um, but, you know, I do love Jeff Buttle. I love Jeff Buttle. He is, like, from that era of skaters, like, the first round of Patrick Chan. You know what I mean? I like, love it's, Jeff Buttle so much. He's so great. I, I truly love him. He's he's amazing. And, you know, just her technique in the short program, you know, she stepped out of one jump. There was kind of a shaky landing on another jump. She did not look confident. Some of the elements looked under-rotated. There was that very awkward combo. Like, it just doesn't feel right. I, I just don't know why. Mm. But talking about a free skate, I know when the music came out, you did not like that she was skating to Allegria. You had <laughs> oh my gosh. thoughts okay, I need about to explain it. Myself. I uh, had a lot of thoughts about it. And, and this is all stemming from the fact that last season we had um, Peng and Jin who skated to Allegria. And I just was not that's a really different a f- level man though <laughs> yeah it, it, i just really was not really a fan of that program in general uh I, I wasn't really a fan of the costumes i don't think they really ever skated it to their full potential uh so coming into this program i was like oh my gosh i have another season of alegria it just <laughs> brings back these memories for me and this is very different in different in general for example the cartwheel <laughs> that that was incorporated the uh, semi it's, it's very different look i didn't mind allegria i didn't mind the music although there was like a real like whoa sudden music cut like two-thirds of the way through i think the choreography is really interesting you know that intricate um the arm stuff that she was doing it was well i think it was well choreographed i think the program has potential when it's all cleaned up i would love the costume to be an awesome unitard though i would love she needs to be wearing a unitard yeah i i think that she could really kind of like push it with the costumes a little bit Mm -hmm. especially with this kind of whole cirque du soleil kind of theme going on here right i think that she can do a lot with the makeup the costume the vibe i just it didn't really have any of that at this moment in time for me she was doing a lot of thinking and not a lot of performing like she popped her axle there was a single flip it, it just was not technically there and it was not performatively there either 
combined with that, I just hate <laughs> having this image of her FaceTiming with Brian Aww. in my head and feeling this deep sense of betrayal like that Taylor Swift song, Sad, Beautiful, uh. Tragic, <laughs> off of the album Red. Um, just this sense of like betrayal, knowing that not more than like a week later did we hear this news that she was returning to a Terry and... Like, I just wonder, like, at that point in time, like, did Brian know? Like, I don't think so. Like, coming off the ice, did he have to provide, like, encouraging language for her? And, like, knowing Brian Orser, right, like, he would. But, like, it just kind of pains me. It truly, truly pains me. Look, I think it pained her to skate through that because she probably was in pain and was just like, I'm not ready for this, but I have to show it. Like, I, th- I honestly think that it's... It, the program has a lot of potential, but coming off the ice, you know, I think her and Brian had a long chat afterwards. Like they, they were probably chatting about how, you know, this was, wasn't a great outing for her and it's really hard training over FaceTime. And I think it's just one of those bittersweet things. It's almost like when two people break up and their reasoning is that, you know, we're still very much in love with each other, but it's just wrong timing. And you're just like, no you're just like yeah no you know but it would still I hate be- that shit i feel very activated at that <laughs> i refuse to talk about it i feel very activated by that that archetype <laughs> <laughs> but um you know i'd love it if you know if borders reopen and she she just goes all right terry bye i need to go i've got an apartment waiting for me with jason brown and i need to go <laughs> yeah i mean i would too but i think like it would tr- truly break my heart if borders opened to Canada and Russia and she still did not return to Brian Orser. I think the Federation would definitely want to keep her in Russia, but Brian was just like, our, do- like, our doors are always open. And I'm like, no, don't say that. But what was funny was um, at test skates when like after a free skate, the camera went like so close um to Jenya and her phone that Brian was just like whoa and you can see him like actively leap back on FaceTime this is like such like a 2020 thing right like if we were not living in this world of 2020 we would not be talking about this we would not be talking about how Brian is on FaceTime and we are speculating about whether he knew about this switch and we're assigning tropes from a romance novels to their situation about the one that got away. Like we would not be having this activating conversation, right? Like, and I just find this all just very upsetting. Just this whole situation, very upsetting. I really hope that we'll see them work together again in the future, whether it's like for competition or whether she decides to coach there, but they, they need a reunion. They, yeah. <sighs> All right, let's move on from this depressing news and let's talk about non-depressing news, which is Alexandra Trusova's showing at Russian Skates. Yeah, I think this is the the, the least depressing piece of news that we've received from this event. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, first of all, we see her in this very very nice black and white striped adidas crop top like this is a, I, for, okay first of all i love a long sleeve crop top i love someone that has mm-hmm. the energy and the vibe and the confidence to wear a long sleeved crop top much less to test skate so big fan big fan this is how you like fashionably turn up serena williams would be proud <laughs> yeah and and i think that just like her whole energy here is very refreshed it's I think it's very different from the way that we saw her towards the end of last season before obviously it was abruptly cut off but I just remember kind of seeing her I think it was at nationals where she had just finished kind of skating her Game of Thrones program and the jumps had not gone the way that she was expecting a lot of the elements were very rushed there were not a lot of transitions in and out of the elements and she just looked like extremely defeated right with this extremely powerful piece of yeah. music but not a lot of follow through and obviously the choreography is somewhat if not all to blame for it but just kind of <laughs> seeing her blossom like in this way at the start of the season really gives me a lot of hope for for the way that this could go for her eventually Absolutely. She was the best surprise of the short program night for me. You know, she said herself that 
you know, I finally get slow music. And she looks so good in this short program. Yelena Yelinik did wonders with the choreography. She pulled off the choreography and she, you know, and she's capable of, you know, those intricate movements and those edges. And it looks like she could have her skate, like her program components up in the high sevens, low eights, like, or maybe like, let's just, let's say mid eights. How about that? Given like the bonus, but she looked so good in the short. Like I actually enjoyed watch, watching her skating. Like we, we all know her jumps are magnificent, but her actual skating, it was great. Like she's capable of it. Yeah, I, I really, really enjoyed it. And, and I think that, you know, her jump technique previously, you know, I, I think that it's definitely improved after kind of her move to Plushenko's Angels, after becoming a Plushenko's Angel. Um, I think her technique has for sure improved. We, we are not seeing some of this pre-rotation. We are not seeing a lot of like upper body jumping um, that was kind of occurring when she was at Sambo. I think the technique is really improving. Yeah, I, th- I think just like this new referee style crop top energy is is very nice. <laughs> I was very happily surprised to see this version of Sasha Trusova. Yeah, and she's over, you know, over the preseason or off season, she's she's definitely grown, but her technique is solid enough that it's carried her through. And you know, we can attribute that attribute a lot of that to her previous coach, like past um, before a Terry to Volkov that she learnt to jump with her legs. And obviously at a Terry, they really, you know, love pushing the pre-rotation and, you know, jumping with the upper body. But, you know, back to Plushenko, who's got that very traditional jumping style, it's legs and just really tight, efficient jumping and rotation. And yeah, no, it looks great. Um, But when we go to the free skate, all of the lovely skating skills from the short program just fell to the wayside again. And we got back old Sasha. (laughs) Yeah, and uh, I I think that the music that she chose, or I guess her team chose, is I at this point in time I see it as kind of a detriment to her. Romeo and Juliet is such a warhorse, you know. In recent memory, <laughs> I mean, these are people. Okay, let's start with just like Jun Wan Cha, like the June Liet banner. Like I just and the Leonardo DiCaprio yes. voiceover. Like I just don't think I will ever see another Romeo like that. I just won't. And and <laughs> I guess for for less dramatics here, uh, there was also Young Yu in recent memory with this beautiful Juliet like headpiece in like these pastel colors that was just so nice. Uh, and one that I guess I personally enjoy a little bit less, but was also kind of an iconic Romeo and Juliet was was Maddie Hubble and Zach Donahue with their Romeo and hmm. Juliet. Um, but just kind of all of these in recent memory and, and to kind of add Sasha Trusova to that list of people and the Romeo and Juliet repertoire. Yeah, I mean, Costanaya also skated to Romeo and Juliet two seasons ago um, with like when... When Plushenko originally announced the the music um, choices, the three music choices that they were going to use, like it was going to start off with the exact same way that Aliona's program was starting off. And I was just like, really, you couldn't have done a little bit of research. But when it came out, like the, some, the music, um, the music choices had changed just a little bit. But I kind of, I kind of disagree with you. I agree, but disagree with you because I think that. Prokofiev's Romeo and Juliet is a great vehicle for her because there are really some, like some punchy moments and I know like it is a war horse but I feel like if you're gonna do a war horse pick pick a song or pick a song pick a piece of music that can really suit you that's like on brand for you and you can really show yourself with and I think you know parts of Romeo and Juliet really really lend to Sasha but she really needs to perform it if she's really going to make an impression. Otherwise, it's just going to be another dud. And we're just like, just this, no, whatever. But the music cuts actually aren't that bad. They're really not that bad. But, you know, she really does need to find the ability to switch up, her, switch off her, like, jump focus intensity mode when she's not preparing for a jumping passes. Like, she performs... Well, she performs inwards, I think. She doesn't really expel her performance to, like, the outer rafters of the audience. Like, her focus is really within herself. And I get it, because, like, she's lining up a bunch of quads. 
Yeah, and obviously I think that with more training, with kind of this more solid, more classical jump technique without all this upper body movement and preparation, I think that once she gets the jumps solid, I think she might be able to focus a little bit more on her artistry and her expression. That is my hope at least. Yeah, hopefully. And I think that Plushenko will will definitely point that out and You know, Alenik would definitely, you know, help her in her free skate as well. So I'm, I'm actually, will we see her as a world champion this season? Oh, those are big words, Claudia. (laughs) Those are, those are very big words, but I think that if she improves, like at the trajectory she's going, maybe she'll have a Lisa Tuktamisha for season where if her jumps are all like consistent and delivered, she will have, you know, the judges will have no choice but to give her that gold. Like, it's a very interesting situation because we all know that if she delivers her jumps, she will win on technical points alone. Like, who cares about how crap her skating skills are? Like, the technical score will be too hard to beat. So, hmm, very, very interesting. It is very, very interesting. Speaking of very, very interesting, we are uh, missing Alina Zagitova. Yes, she decided not to compete at Test Skates, and I don't think many people were surprised by that. Look, yeah, I if she doesn't compete this season, I wonder who will be called up in her place. Like, will it be Sofia Samadurova? Will it be Anastasia Guliakova? Or would it be like, I don't know, Ksenia Sinitsina. I would love to see Ksenia Sinitsina on the, on the senior circuit. I absolutely love her skating, and I'm sad that she didn't compete at test skates. But I feel like Alina's just like, you know what? Everyone else, shut up. I'm going to do this on my own terms, and I don't give a, sh- I don't give a crap what you guys think. I have my Olympic medal, and I've got my sponsorship with Shishado. I'm good. <laughs> Yeah, I, I just hope that I can see, we can see her on the competitive circuit again, whenever that may be. Yeah, no, I abs- I'm 100% with you. I was big Genia Stan in, at the, in the Olympic season. But then afterwards, especially last season with her short program to Mev- Mevoy, Mevoy, I was just like, girl, like her lines and everything. We all, we all know that her jumping you know, is great, but... I really started to like and really like love her skating when she skated to Mervoy, even though it was a Daniil program, but I would, I would just love for her to pull a genia and like continue, continue skating. Like who cares about the three A and all the quads that they're popping out? Just, just keep going. Yeah, for sure. And, And obviously after that Olympic season, things changed a lot, right? Like ladies started to introduce more quads into their programs. They also changed the rules and the scoring after that because during Olympic season, if we remember... Back to that faded season. It seems like so long ago now that we've lived yeah. 96 months of 2020. Um, <laughs> but she was able to kind of obtain the bonus, right, for completely backloading her programs, especially her free skate during that season. And and so even kind of like if she showed up with that program, with the strengths that she had and, and backloading her jumps was definitely one of those strengths. Like, we just don't know how it would hold up, right, to 3A and all these, like, Rika Kahira, all these new folks with their quads, right? But I just want to see her thrive, right? I kind of want to see her just go out with with a bang and and with her own agency and kind of dictating what she's doing. And and I just just wish her the best. Yeah, I think she's doing that. Look, she's got all the medals and she has a rule in the ISU rule book named after her, the Zagita rule. (laughs) So she's done it all. She's done it all. She she truly has. I, I like her. She's grown on me a lot, and I, I I just wish her the best. And that's it. We finally finished our discussion on pairs and ladies of the Russian test skates. Ooh, that was a long episode. That was a long episode. Why don't we move into the kiss and cry? Yeah. Um. Let's yeah. Let's start off with our book recommendation for this episode. Um. This book is called. You Should See Me in a Crown by Leah Johnson, which, yes, was also inspired by You Should See Me in a Crown by Billie Eilish. By Aliona Kostanaya. <laughs> yes, exactly. It's Aliona Kostanaya's short program music. So 
This book is about Liz Lighty. Uh, she lives in the small town of Campbell, Indiana, but she really wants to leave and go to a really renowned college, Pennington College, where they have an amazing orchestra and also because she wants to go to med school there. Her whole life, she has felt super othered in Campbell because she is one of the only black students there, and she is also romantically interested in girls. After her college financial aid falls through, she decides to run for prom queen, and she starts falling for one of the other girls who's also in the running for prom queen, whose name is Mac. The romance between them throughout this whole book is just like super swoon worthy, but it's also very much a small town romance. Uh, It's got flavors of both that kind of like desperation and intrepidation of their last year before going off to college. It's such like a fun and celebratory book, like it's a feel good book, which to be honest, like we all need a little bit of that in this very very, very dark year, like Taylor Swift says, sad, beautiful, tragic. (laughs) It's very much the theme of 2020. Um, And again, that book is called You Should See Me in a Crown by Leah Johnson, also by Billie Eilish, also by Aliona (laughs) Kosternaya. Why don't we now move into talking about, I know last episode we were talking about some potential people who have merchandise to purchase, uh, one of whom is Yevgenia Medvedeva, whose merch also says control you held down Evgenia Medvedeva in a slightly elevated papyrus style font. Um, I'm not quite sure that this would be the merch that I would personally purchase from an athlete only because my personal name is not Evgenia Medvedeva and I don't want to declare it on my torso on my baseball cap or any part of my body, Um, even though I do support her. And again, I'm very much a stan. I don't think I'm a stan of this particular version of merch. (laughs) Look, it's like it's not as loud as it could be. Like she could have done a lot louder. It's like still tasteful. I mean, you know, even though it was control you, at least she didn't use Comic Sans (laughs) MS. It, it, it's it's very true. It also wasn't control U, control B at Gavinia Medvedeva. It also wasn't control U, control B, <laughs> control I at Gavinia Medvedeva. So, yes, it, it could. It's definitely less emphasized that it could have been. But you know, for what I'm picturing from her merch, and I do believe that she has merch like this, is her kind of in like her Sailor Moon exhibition costume perhaps like a sketch oh that would be so cool though yeah maybe like a sketch of her and her Anna Karenina costume something like that maybe even just like her and her yeah and because she can draw we've seen it yeah like I was thinking even maybe just like a shadow or a silhouette of her and her Luna tissue box like oh yeah I, I don't know just not a hoodie just stating statement period of Genia Medvedeva. Like, I just don't know that that's the energy that, that I'm for. <laughs> that's all right. Just like with her programs, we'll let this steep, we'll let this marinate, and maybe the next line will be better. <laughs> Perhaps it might be better. What about Lisa Tukhtamishiva's merch? How do we feel about that? Her saying that she will release, like, her merch lines got me so excited Because, like, I have no idea what to expect. But you know it's going to be, like, some sort of fabulous, like, yeah, I'm really excited to see what she comes up with. You know what I was just thinking? You know how we were just talking about, like, uh, You Don't Love Me with, like, her jazz hands, like, that short program and how that was her brand? Yeah. I was thinking that she should... (laughs) that she should make you know those like hands where you like shake them they're just like plastic and they like clap (laughs) she should have like clappy hands that say control you elizabeth (laughs) tukshimishiva no no (laughs) wow no she should do the she should do flappy hands but like have Almost like a flip book of all of her previous <laughs> costumes and moo's and just you can, you can. Yeah, like oh my gosh. Okay, so Taylor oh Swift's God. folklore merch. Okay, for this new album, folklore. In case y'all didn't know that I'm obsessed with, she had this one exclusive <laughs> merch drop. Okay, and it was basically all the eras of Taylor Swift. So like her 1989 era, the Reputation era, the self titled album era, and they were all just kind of like lined up in a row, like different iterations of Taylor. And so like. 
Evgenia should do one of those. Lisa should do one of those, right? Along with the with the flappy hands thing, the hand clapper. Uh, she should maybe she should have seven <laughs> hands in her hand clapper. Hand clappers are usually made of three hands, right? She should have seven hands. <laughs> one one iteration of Lisa Tukhtimishva on each of these seven hands. I would be. I would buy it. I hundred percent would buy it. I'd buy it. Add to cart. Add to cart. Checkout. All right. Is, is that us done for our Russian test skates wrap up? <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm very tired right now. Not oh, only yeah. because it's almost four in the morning, but just because this was a very long, exhausting event interspersed with long, exhausting pieces of dramatics and Renaissance era poetry. <laughs> no, I agree. All right. Let, let's wrap this up. Yeah, so after all that, I am Joss, and you can come and chat with us at Lutz, L-U-T-Z, Get Down Pod on Twitter and Instagram. And if you want to work with us, please shoot us an email at letsgetdownpod at gmail.com. If you like this podcast and you can see yourself in the crown, please visit wherever you listen to podcasts and give us some five-star love. We'd really appreciate it. Thanks, y'all, for listening. Talk to you guys soon. Bye.